Hello, my friends. The day has finally arrived. It's the members preview day for the Jersey Devil Coaster. It's been a long time coming. I know I've done a few construction updates myself. The day is finally here. So the questions we have to ask ourselves here, how is it running? Which seat is the best? How is the pacing? How does it compare against the other single rail coasters that are over at CGA and Fiesta Texas? We're gonna figure that out. So I invite you to come along. Let's start this. Just backing up here for a second. We can enter over by where Nitro and the Congo Rapids walkway is into this little area. They do have a little merch booth here. I have no idea if that's permanent or not. It doesn't, it looks like a cart on wheels. Uh, there is a little check-in tent over there where you can get a wristband. The lift hill, surprisingly loud. It might be even louder than uh, Batman the Ride. And the queue does go right by it. It is noisy, surprisingly noisy. I have no idea if it's similar with the other single rails. On the opposite side here, they do have a very nicely landscaped area. And by other side, I mean the opposite side of the entrance here. They have a couple of benches set up here, but they're directly in the sun for some reason. Don't know why that was a choice, but it's an interesting use of space here. And they basically just opened this up over here. Over here in this spot is where the wall would have been, and this was the bridge that we all collectively gathered on. Stare at this. It's a beautiful sight. Uh, there it goes, hitting the mid-course brake run. Jumping over to the complete opposite side, there is an entrance right across from the Jersey Devil Barbecue, which will lead you over to the entrance. And then just over to the right here, there is some bathrooms. So this is where you would hang a right, and right there are the bathrooms. It's kind of uh, something they kept from the kids' area when this was a kids' area. And there goes the lift hill again, as I said, quite loud. The other thing it seems that they kept around was this statue, which formerly was in front of Diablo or El Diablo. That was that Larson loop over at El Toro. Hey Diablo, where you been hiding? In the back, eating Takis. Takis? Yeah, just so many of them. Oh, okay. So let's talk about the ride experience. I managed to get on this about five times. My favorite seat was the eighth one, believe it or not, not the 12th. And that is one of the key differences here between this single rail coaster and a few of the other ones. They only have eight seats, if I remember right. It might not be eight, but I do know that they have less. And those are known for being pretty intense coasters, whereas this one definitely wasn't the most intense thing. I might even rate Nitro to be a little more intense, except for a couple little parts somewhere in the layout. But I ended up riding in row the second seat, the fourth seat, the eighth seat, the 11th seat, the 12th seat, basically eight through 12. And my favorite was the eighth, believe it or not. That's where I got the most balance of good air time and that whip and pull that you want from the back seat. It felt like the most intense seat to me, but who knows, they have been actively tweaking everything around here in between while they're going. Like, there hasn't been a terrible amount of downtime. It has gone down a couple of times, but not as much as you think, but it seems like they are making little tweaks here and there. I have no idea how they change how the coaster behaves, but so far, seat eight is my favorite. As I said, the lift hill is very noisy, but the first drop, is excellent sustained air going down to the bottom there really thought that that was going to be less intense than it was just because of the height it doesn't look so intimidating when you're looking at it from the ground because you have nitro right next door but it was still pretty good especially towards the back there basically 8 through 12 is going to give you a uh, seats 8 through 12 is going to give you a pretty decent sustained air going towards the bottom of the hill then we get into the dive loop, which I believe they're calling the Raven Dive. And that one has a nice bit of air as you get to the top and then it just pulls you right down into that inversion. Really solid element. 
a little bit of whip, but just a tiny bit, getting you into the, the next hill there. It's a decent amount of whip if you get into the into like the back four. The front was just a little pop, and, and then you got pulled. Probably uh, might be my favorite follow-up ele element after a first drop there. Then getting into that big airtime hill, there was some sweet sustained airtime right there. And then again, just a little pull to the bottom. Seems like it might be running a teensy bit slower than, than you'd expect. It's just not really forceful. It's gentle airtime. I have no idea wh what to really define it as, but it's airtime nonetheless. Then we get into the zero G stall, which I thought was a lot of fun. Disorienting to be sure, especially when you're coming out of it. The maneuver you make as you're going into the next element is very like, what, what just happened? Uh, pretty cool come out of your seat a little bit, but nothing too crazy I think just the sensation of being upside down and for a little bit of time like that is really cool Going into the turnaround as I said was a little disorienting, but you feel like there, There's a bit of intensity there as you're going into that turnaround. I think they're calling it the crow's nest but it's just whoosh, like you really feel that especially towards the back end. I feel like the front end if I remember, it wasn't anything too pronounced, but as you were going down there, there was a nice little pop uh, going down out of that turnaround. So then getting that pop and pull down in out of the turnaround, there was a really, I, I found this a sluggish zero G roll. It's like something didn't translate or transfer energetically into the zero G roll and it felt kind of slow. And that was across all five of my rides there. It was just kind of like, and then you, like, it, it wasn't, it felt like just a little slower than it, than I ha would have expected, a little more delayed uh, okay. in getting into it. Once you're there, once gravity feels like it starts taking over, then you kind of go, but getting into it, it felt a little slow, if that makes sense. So like halfway through the roll, it feels slow, and then coming out of it, then you feel the pace start to pick up. Whatever speed it does gain from coming out of the roll, you then kind of lose going into the mid-course brake run, which I understand it's important to allow for higher capacity and all of that, but you lose, I think, way too much speed. I, uh, hopefully they can dial that in so you get a lot more, or don't lose as much speed and can retain it so you go into the next element a lot more, which is just a simple turn, which if you're going faster, that would be a lot more intense. After that turn, which was decently intense, but I know it could be most likely a little bit more if it weren't for the uh, brake run. You go into these off-axis hills, which are a lot of fun. You get a little pop of air and then you get pulled down into like a little a little lateral pull down. And you do that twice. Then there is another little hill and then you finish off the ride into the brake run. So overall, it's tamer than I was expecting, but does have some pretty wide appeal because of that. Obviously, we have El Toro if you really like your intense rides. This one, it feels somewhere between like Batman the Ride and Nitro in terms of like inversions and airtime. My favorite element was probably the Raven Dive just because it's really cool to go into airtime right into an inversion and get pulled down. Outside of that, the turnaround when it was intense in the back was really cool. Zero G roll was probably my least favorite, but the stall is probably my third favorite element out of this ride. So how does it stack up against the other coasters in this park? I would say that it's probably like a solid third or fourth in this park. If you're comparing it to stuff like El Toro and Ka and Nitro, it's got really tough competition to say the least. But also this one kind of fits in a niche that maybe isn't represented in the park and it's something that's got the airtime and has the inversions, whereas we have some other things that are really unique, like King Ka, that is pure speed. We have El Toro, which is just world class. Nitro, which is an airtime machine. This kind of slots in somewhere in the middle there. The other big question that everyone was asking was how is the pacing of this? I say there is a couple of spots where, yes, they do lose speed and it could be improved. I hope they make those improvements. I gotta remind you guys that this is in member previews. It'll open for real on June 13th. And then after that, who knows what they can do beyond that to improve the ride experience and make it a lot smoother. 
But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me here at the member preview event for the Jersey Devil Coaster. Wanted to share some of my initial thoughts after riding it a couple of times. My favorite seat, seat number eight. Check it out. Let me know how you feel. If you have ridden it, let me know your thoughts on the Jersey Devil Coaster. But anyway, guys, that's just a couple of my thoughts after riding the Jersey Devil Coaster a couple of times at the member preview event. Who knows what's going to change, if it's going to smooth out, if it's going to get a little faster, more aggressive. Can't say for sure, but we'll be keeping an eye on this after the opening day. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And I hope you go make your own adventure. Bye.